the church and in the world um, to say, as many of you are aware, last September a group consisting of the Church of Secular Jews and the staff began meeting regularly to create a church profile and to treat of a Sunday school. At the end of January, we shared the profile we created with Cindy Mueller in our Minnesota conference office. Via Zoom, she gave us several suggestions on how we could improve the profile. She also impressed on us that there were 15 other UCC churches in our conference seeking a pastor, and there was very few qualified candidates by choice or label. <clears throat> As we set to revising the profile with Cindy's suggestions, we discussed how very fortunate we were to have had such a good candidate in our family. Therefore, we asked, and she has accepted our call to be half-time pastor for the Austin Congregational UCC Church. Oh, and I'm honored and proud to announce our settled pastor candidate is Elizabeth O'Sullivan. Elizabeth's official ordination service was Saturday, March 23rd at the Northfield Congregational Church. We will be in contact with the conference on how to move forward, but I do know there will be a congregational vote to accept Elizabeth. Uh, I believe that's April 28th, uh, the last Sunday in April. So please mark your calendars and need you all here to vote. Also, Elizabeth will continue in Medford, as she has, and that church has agreed to move their service to 8.30 so that our service can adjust to 10.30. If there's any questions, please feel free to contact me or the church office, and we'll try our best to resolve them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I do want to add one thing. In March, I didn't I didn't have my ordination ceremony yet. I was just approved for ordination. But what that means is there's going to be another party for the actual ordination, and, and you guys will be invited. So keep keep your eyes out and looking maybe early for you. Care. And I think Austin and Medford are, are trying to get in touch to iron out some details too, right? Like, so there's no, no date to announce yet. Okay, well, let us thank you so much and, and let us worship. People of God, welcome. Surely God is in this place. We come to worship and to rest in God's presence. Breathe deep for the goodness of God surrounds us. The Holy One who sustains the universe is near us. When we're tired, worn down, and carrying heavy burdens, God is with us. God strengthens us that we might help carry one another's burdens. So let us join together in wonder and thanksgiving for God's love that lifts us up on wings eagles. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Please rise in body or spirit to sing I greet you, sure Redeemer.
Good morning. Sweet. We're going to have a special guest. Hey, Victor, good to see you. Good to see you. We're going to have a special guest today for the children's message. Um, but that guest has not yet arrived. But will very soon. Do you already know? Yes. Yes, it's not a secret at all, is it? It's not a secret. Okay, it's just going to be a secret, like, what she actually looks like when she shows up, then, because you know the basics already. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, the baby, when baby chickens are running around and they're with their mamas, the big mama chickens will help them get food. Yeah, for sure. But this is just, yeah, yeah, you'll meet her soon. Um, so kind of the... The reason that I wanted to bring, it, it's a chicken. The, the special guest is a chicken. The word kind of got out part way, but yes, Trisha is going to be bringing in one of, of her pet hens. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, <laughs> she's so nice. Yeah, yeah. So here she is, and like I, I know chickens, right? And I can, she's she's a really nice chicken. I can tell by the way she's chirping, right now that she, that's like a calm and friendly thing for a chicken to say, which is so impressive. Like being in a new environment with new people, like this is a fabulously friendly and wonderful chicken. Um, yeah, yeah. She, I don't think she's had any baby chickens. We're having some questions about baby chickens, but she she has not. She's not a mama. But, I mean, if, if she did have babies, I'm sure she'd take really good care of them. Um, and sort of the reason that I, I, invited, I invited her to come today and invited Trisha to bring her with, it's kind of like, I don't know about you guys, but I really like chickens. And so when, when, I, when there's a chicken around, like, I get really happy to see it. And I also, I like, I like want to look at it and I want to, touch it, and I think, oh, it would be fun to feed it and, like, throw grain around on the, on the, you know, and scatter grain to watch her peck it up and scratch and everything. And these, th that just kind of bubbles up in my heart. And I think for a lot of people, when there's a chicken, or if they're, like, fans of cats and dogs, that, that kind of love and, like, closeness, it just gets real obvious what you want to do with them. Yeah, it's nice things. I don't know if you guys can hear... She's, she's just, she, the chicken is just saying this soft little, burp, 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 like, so sweet. Um, the scripture that we're going to read today is um, when Jesus, it's, it's after the crucifixion, it's after the resurrection, and he's appearing to his disciples. And he's, th the things he's asking them to do when they're together is, like, look at him, like, touch him, like, share a meal with him, like feed him. And I, that, that same kind of like loving response, like when there's, there's a pet around, it, it's, um, I think that love comes from God because we're asked to share that same kind of joy um, with, with the community, with animals as a way, I think, of welcoming Jesus into our hearts because th th those are some of the ways that he asked for his disciples to respond to him after the resurrection. So, yes, so um, would, would any, if, if anyone would like to touch her, you're invited. We can go real slow and gentle. I mean, she's, she's small. Ooh, very nice. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. That was a little more distressed. That was a little bit less. Okay. You are such a nice chicken. She got along with you. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. That was a little feather. Okay. Let, let's take a quick prayer. God, thank you so much for gathering us together. Thank you so much that um, that Trisha's chicken could visit us. 
And please keep that love coming up in our hearts, that desire to connect and share, share food together um, so that we can greet you and be close to you in all of our interactive people, um, everyone we meet, cats, dogs, chickens, birds, everything. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. So happy to meet her. Um, let's 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 select for the food cell for the backpack project. I'd like to invite Don to come forward to read from the Gospel of Luke this morning. said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you doubt? For why is in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that they, that that is myself. Touch them and see, for the ghost does not have flesh and has be bones as you will see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you nothing here to eat? They gave him a piece of um, broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. When he then he said to them, these are my words that I have spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the um, law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. Here ends the reading of the word.
the gospel. Like in this moment, it's, it's, there's a few more passages afterwards, but this is really like wrapping it up. Um, what's going on in this passage is that Jesus is rooting people in relationship first in this, uh, in this introduction where they're responding to him as he is appearing to them after the resurrection. And he's saying things like, peace be to you. Why are you troubled? Like, look at me. Touch me. Share some fish. Do you guys have something to eat? You know, he's, he's rooting it in this relationship before sharing with this, the, sh- before sharing this powerful call and vision, which comes at the end of what we read, which is, look, this is the culmination. This is it. And you're called to go out and share it from here. So this balance of rooting in relationship, relationship with Christ, relationship with other people, happens to balance out this powerful, powerful vision and mission that's shared at the end of the passage. So I've been, I've been holding this passage, holding this kind of picture of the balance of the relationships with this powerful vision, and I was doing some work on my laptop, trying not to get distracted, but I was getting a little distracted. I'd looked at Facebook. I shouldn't have done it, but I switched back, and I was trying to get my focus back, and for reasons I still do not fully understand, the, my computer started talking to me. It, it, it was a male voice telling me a story. I, I do not know why. And I was like, look, okay, I just got my focus back. I need to do the work. I was going through each and every tab trying to figure out what was going on, make it stop. I couldn't. <laughs> and, um, and by this time, I'd gotten quite interested in the story. <laughs> so, so by the time I figured out that for reasons that are still unclear to me there was some like thumbnail thing behind all the other work I was doing sharing with me a video for reasons I don't understand by the time I figured that out like I was hooked and I will, I will share with you now what this gentleman was saying it was a comedian I, I believe his name was Chris Knight and he was talking about how he felt such a powerful um, understanding that he was to be a comedian. Like it was so clear, he was so confident, and he got a break. He was going to do a 30-minute show for HBO. This was going to be it, right? Right. His his one chance, and he was putting his heart into it. He was so clear, so confident, and 20 minutes into the 30-minute set. This booming music started shaking the floor. They, they were over a nightclub of some kind where they were filming this. And, like, he could hardly hear himself. He was upset. He was starting to forget what he was going to say. No one could hear him. And it ended. And he was livid, just livid, because he had something to give. And it had been ruined. And he didn't think he was going to have a chance like that come again. It, it was like the whole rest of his life now was sort of in question. And he was so angry. He spoke to the people who were, um, you know, who were filming, who were, who were putting on this sh- HBO show. He was not a prominent person in show business at all, but he took them to task. He was saying, how could this happen? Like, who is responsible? This, this was supposed to be this way. And they said, look, it wasn't us. It, it's this, it was the nightclub. Like, we didn't turn on that music. It's the nightclub. And look, the, uh, the nightclub owner is, is right over there. And they, they sh- it was an older gentleman. He was getting into a Ford Taurus. The only thing on this comedian's mind was, was what had happened. And he went over and was, he was yelling at the gentleman in his vehicle. He pounded on the vehicle. And the gentleman did what... I would hope most reasonable people would do in a situation like that. He looked and drove away. <laughs> oh, so the comedian came back in and was, was still trying to work it out with the people um, doing the HBO special. And then the gentleman showed up again, flanked by two really enormous and tough-looking men and pointed at the comedian and said, hey, come, come with me. 
the people who were, all the rest of the people there, the people from HBO were like, don't, don't go, <laughs> don't do this. But the comedian was so focused on his vision that he went, he went, he followed the older gentleman, the two huge men into a kitchen in the nightclub, the door was shut, and he was explaining, he was, he was using some bad language. He was telling this gentleman how he'd, he'd ruined this thing with this music, and the gentleman stopped him and said, look, your friends lied to you when they said it was my fault. We had a deal that I was going to delay my plans for the night for my business. They were going to pay me to make up for this, and they never did. And in this moment, all of a sudden, <laughs> the comedian could see that the man was telling the truth and that he was locked in the kitchen. <laughs> And he said, look, sir, I, I, I owe you an apology. And for whatever reason, that music playing when it did, I think it ruined my life. And the gentleman looked at him with sympathy, softened and came and patted him on the cheek and said, you know, you're a real man. Opened the kitchen door and <laughs> the, the comedian went back out and the the HBO people were like, you know that you were yelling at the Russian mafia just now. <laughs> um, so he went home and thought about it. And he thought about it. And the thing that he was taking away from this was the power of this vision that he was holding this power, this vision, that he was meant to be a comedian, that this was how it needed to be, that he was confident in what he had to offer. And he thought about other people in his life, people he'd grown up with. He said some of them did not have a good vision. And they followed it and did not do well. Some of them had a very good vision, but had kind of been pulled aside from their vision, and it had been hard. But he never again doubted the power of what a passionate, confident vision can do. It, it just led him in there to yell at the Russian mafia. And as your pastor, I hope that is not what a passionate vision leads you to do. Nor do I hope it leads you to swear at strangers or bang on the car of an elderly gentleman. <laughs> that's, that's not where we're hoping this will go. But it is a powerful vision that we are asked to carry by Jesus here. It is the best vision. A vision of renewal, a vision of hope, a vision of a power that is greater than the worst humanity can dish out, a power that pushes past death itself, that could not be restrained by the grave, a power and a call to continue the work of the prophets of the Old Testament, which call people to turn away from ways of greed and injustice. We are called into a vision that promises forgiveness for us, for everyone, for the community in Christ, a Christ that is with us and present with us, as real as a guy who would show up in a room and say, hey, do you have something to eat? This is the best kind of vision. And it's a vision that has a place for us. A vision that we're asked to step into and hold at the front of our minds. After that, after that talk that um, I heard quite accidentally, I found I kept thinking about it as I was washing the dishes, as I was getting the service ready, as I was thinking about plans for my family when I was getting crabby, and that question kept popping to mind, what is your vision in this moment? 
What is the vision that you are living into? And is there not a more powerful vision that you are being asked to carry and to share right now? And I tell you, it changed washing the dishes. It changed thinking about my family. It changed preparing the service whenever that popped to mind. The other part of this <laughs> text, the other part of this story that I heard about the comedian is that when we do step into that glory, that call, that power of the vision that Christ shares with us, we're still asked to ground that in relationships in relationship with the Prince of Peace himself. Holding him in our lives just as real as someone who would show up and eat some fish with us. And to include in that relationship the other people who are clearly in the room with us, the other people who are in the community, in the world with us who are just as real and solid as Christ was when he showed up in this account of his appearance to the disciples. Because we're not always going to have Jesus there with us like they had him here. Someone you can put your arms around. But we're always going to have each other. So let us root ourselves in those relationships and may those roots those roots be strong enough to support this vision of the hope of Christ that we're called to live into and share may it come to mind may it guide us may we live into its power amen Let us sing.
please join me in prayer. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together. Um, this day we especially lift up um, those who are suffering because of uh, violence and conflict or fear of violence and conflict, and we ask you to please move in the hearts and the minds of the leaders and the people to ensure peace for all the nations. If there's something you'd like us to do, please show us what it is. This morning, let us lift up the names of uh, those in our, our bulletin. This morning, we pray for Chatu, Chatu. Sarah, Sarah, Dan, Dan. Joe, Joe. Matt, Matt, Savannah and Aria, and all advocates of justice, kindness, and humility. And we lift up gratitude for Laugh Out Loud Sunday and the St. Andrews sisters who were here with us last week. It was so much fun. And we also lift up gratitude for Kirsten who stepped up to the plate to lead last Sunday with such beautiful, willing attitude. Thank you, Kirsten. Let us, um, let us now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now uh, we'll take an offering, giving in gratitude for the abundance that God showers upon us every day. Please enjoy the gift of music. May these glyphs of blessing be a sign of the love 
light, and glory of our redeeming God, who has created a world of abundance with all that we need. May we remain thankful witnesses to your generosity, O God. We dedicate these offerings to you and your beloved creation. Amen. And now let us gather together as Christ's family and celebrate communion. Ours is an open table, so anyone who's moved is welcome to partake of the Lord's Supper and it is invited. Um, ushers will distribute the bread and fruit, and the bread is gluten-free. But let, let's all, um, let's, let's get the elements and then eat them together all at once. All right, please join me in a gathering prayer. As we travel with Christ this Easter season, may we meet one another and share our meals in a way that opens our eyes to Christ, who is always with us. May we find a blessing in the seeing, in the speaking, in the touching, in the fearing, in the wondering, in the rejoicing, in the staying. A blessing at the table, in the sharing, in the feeding, in the communion. Amen. We remember that on the night of his betrayal, Jesus took the bread, gave you thanks broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, bless this bread, this fruit of the vine, and bless all of us that in e our eating and drinking at this table, our eyes may be opened to recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in one another. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all things are ready.
you. Cup of blessing poured out for you. put our trust in you. We put all that disturbs us into the light of your presence and find what is good. Because of you, we love with gladness. We share all we have with others and lie down to sleep in peace, trusting that you answer the call of your every sleeping child. Amen. May you go forth rooted in the great love of Jesus and in love for one another. And may you go forth with the powerful vision and the hope of the resurrected Christ right in the front of your mind guiding you. Amen. Please join me in the sending verse, Micah 6, 8. What does our still speaking God require? To do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with our God.
Amen.